you guys are all correct. I was a bully in high school. <laughs> <laughs> but it really wasn't something that I like applied for, you know? Like, if you grew up as big as I was, it was either bully or fat tuba player. <laughs> and my uncle told me I sucked at blowing, so bully it was. <laughs> It took me a while. It took me a while to figure out I was a bully, though. It took me a while. Uh, my first person to figure out I was a bully was my mom, actually. Yeah. One day, one of my teachers called her at home and said, uh, "Is Jesse doing his homework?" She said, "Why aren't you asking Jesse?" And he said back to her, "It's easier this way. That kid scares me." <laughs> Uh, but I did get a lot, of, a lot of fights as a kid, I got a lot of fights as a teenager, mainly because I was a really weak child, so I had to make up for it. Uh, when I was a kid, I had a reputation in my neighborhood for being what the kids call a huge pussy. <laughs> <laughs> but I think puberty, things got better, uh, and then I, uh, you know, I started getting a lot more fights. I got a lot more fights. My parents were actually getting worried about it, uh, so they thought that it'd be a good idea at the distraction to put me in acting classes, which I'm no parenting expert. But the solution to a kid that's a good fighter does not sound like also making him a good liar. Uh, you know, it didn't really change how many fights I got into, it just changed how many fights I got away with. So, not the best move. Uh, but you know, I gave it a shot, I gave acting a shot. So one Saturday morning, I went to a community center, they put me and 12 kids in the middle of the community center. They said, you're actually in a kitchen now, uh, action. And then the kids rubbing to my left and threw up everywhere. <laughs> that was me. And I didn't know what acting was. So my first response was, holy shit, this kid commits. <laughs> it must have been in the script or something because before you know it, there was 13 kids just wrenching onto the floor. <laughs> And then it made sense. You must have only been in an airport Panda Express. So that's that's probably where we were at. Jeez. Uh, I am a biracial child. Bear with me. I am a half Cherokee and half Scottish, which makes me half interesting. So. People don't ever believe when I tell them that for some reason, you know? I get it. I get why they don't believe it. Like, my dad's side of the family looks like they hang out with Pocahontas. And I look like I hang out with a guy who gave her smallpox, so... <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. Growing up, Haiti was a really unique experience. It's very unique. Uh, we actually have a word for it in our language. That word is poor. We were so poor that we... Most of my childhood memories take place at our local Dollar Tree. Wow, how was the YouTube video? Is that good? <laughs> Sorry. You're doing the video. Oh, sick, dude. Thank you. Back to this, eh? Right. Seamless rip. Nailed it. Alright. Uh, a lot of my memories are actually at Dollar Tree. Uh, and Dollar Tree is great because it's the only place where you can buy a New York strip steak and a plunger in the same aisle. <laughs> uh, but I do like I, I did figure out that I was uh, Cherokee when I was a child. I was very young, and I was really excited to tell everyone about it. I was really excited to tell them about Cherokee. And then my dad told me that not only are we Cherokee, but we're a part of the original Cherokee that gave away our secrets to then betray other Cherokee members. Um, and then I was excited to never talk about it again. <laughs> so anyways, I'll leave you on this. Uh, I did just hit a big comedy milestone in my career. Uh, as of this month, I made enough in comedy to pay my rent. Uh, it actually really wasn't that hard, though. I just found the only landlord that lets me pay in support of my vibes. Thanks, everybody.